Let me show you one of the best ways to make money doing passenger missions in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Although you can do this in other medium or small size ships, we are going to be doing it in the glorious Python. In order to do these passenger missions, you'll want to head over to the Rubigo system. It's about 450 light years from the bubble. Before you fly all the hell the way out here to make a whole boat pile of space cheddar, let's make sure that your ship is outfitted properly. Ultimately, you're not going to be able to make it all the way out here to the boondocks unless you have a fuel scoop on board, so make sure you grab one of those before leaving the bubble. In order to pound out these passenger missions as fast as you possibly can, you want to make sure that you have at least a 30.15 light year jump range. You will not be doing any combat at all, so you will not want anything in your hard points. For utility mounts, the only thing I like to roll with is at least one to two heat sinks and nothing else. All right, so if you have engineering, you're good. Just copy my loadout. If you do not have your engineers sorted yet, then just derate pretty much absolutely everything you can. With the exception of your frame shift drive, most definitely get that in an A class. For optional internals, and I have tested many, this is by far the very, very best loadout if you're using the Python to do passenger missions in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Now keep in mind you will need a fuel scoop in order to make it out here. I usually fly with a 4A fuel scoop. You can drop off the fuel scoop once you get here, then just replace it with one of the passenger cabins. Then for sheer space laziness as well as convenience, grab yourself the Super Cruise Assist as well as the advanced docking computer. If you don't have the glorious Python already, I recommend that you do this with either the Type 6 or the Asp Explorer. That will also work, get you enough money really fast to buy yourself the Python, then you're good to go. Landing here at Rubigo Mines where we grab up the missions. Now if you just get here for the first time, you're going to want to head over to Hasir's Reach in the exact same system, drop off your fuel scoop, and then buy yourself a passenger cabin. And yeah, now that we no longer have a fuel scoop, most definitely top off your fuel, and if you need to, fill up your heat sinks. Once we're here, we're going to be clicking on the starport services, heading over to the mission board, then we're going to go over to the passenger lounge. It is most definitely worth mentioning that having ally with a certain faction will give you better missions, which will pay you more, so it's ultimately a really good idea to max out your faction as soon as you can. And yeah, I used to be Max Faction with the Sirius Corp, but you know, I beat their asses a whole bunch down on the planet's surface, so looking for anything that has to do with plus rep and I didn't see anything, just gonna grab a mission that's gonna pay me as much money as possible. Let's hop over to the next mission giver. Looks like this one has a 5 million mission. That's really, really good news. These $5 million paydays will almost always be either a 16 slot business or a 12 slot first class, almost in every single case. That is why the glorious Python is so freaking glorious at doing passenger missions in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. It has three size 6 and two size 5 compartments which really really makes making money here at Robigo Mine super duper easy. That is if you have a medium or small ship because this place does not have any large landing pads so don't think you can land like a gigantic beluga here and make even more money because you really can't. You'll be forced to do any passenger missions in large ships over at Hasir's Reach where there's all kinds of space popos ready to bust you for transporting all these illegal passengers. That would be totally unfortunate. That's why this place is really good. It's closer to the star, there's hardly any space popos at all whatsoever, and you can make even more money per trip with a smaller ship than a gigantic beluga, which is kind of ridiculous. Once I have all of my passengers stuffed into my ship like a whole bunch of sardines, I like to start plotting my course over to the Celtha system. All these space scumbags and a handful of actual tourists all want to go over to Sotha so they can check out the serious Astrophyrics lookout point from orbit. Like, I have no idea why it's so when. You know, guess we'll figure it out. Seeing as how you are going to be pounding out these missions over and over and over, let me show you a little trick that's going to save you about 15 seconds per jump. Now, right when you're just about to activate your FSD, go ahead and do that, even though you're right next to the star. Before you get into the red zone where you're starting to get a little too much heat, make sure that you pop a heat sink. Now you're good to go. You didn't have to fly out of the star's radius in order to jump. It's way, way faster. Considering it takes about 10 and a half minutes to complete a total and complete round trip doing these missions, you want to be able to shave off seconds whenever you possibly can. Once you are in system, head over to Sothis A5. 
As soon as you get at least a thousand light seconds away from Sotha A5, open up your navigation panel. You will be able to find the Sirius Atmospherics mission location. Make sure to engage your Super Cruise Assist, but do not align with the target quite yet. Keep accelerating until you get to 6 seconds, then decrease your speed. We are not going to align with the target quite yet. We're going to wait till we get under 4 light seconds away, then we're going to jam it. Counting on our Super Cruise Assist to pull us out, which it did, now all you have to do is target the beacon. While you're scanning the beacon for your passengers, it's a really good time to plot your course all the way back to Rubigo, because, you know, I guess they can't look out any windows, because I don't have any windows in the Python, so I guess enjoy that sightseeing trip. Never forget, we're the top 1% of all passenger liners out there. <laughs> Same method as before, make sure you charge your FSD early, then pop a heatsink in order to save time. As we fly back to Rubigo Mines, it is worth mentioning that if you cannot get your ship over a 30.15 jump range, you won't be able to do two jumps there and two jumps back. It'll either be six jumps or eight jumps total, which will add more time. So knock out a little engineering or at the very least derate everything in your ship except your FSD and you should be able to get to 30, huh? Well, at least I hope you can. Time to do the super cruise assist trick again. I'm going to slingshot myself at the target, let the super cruise assist take over. After we get under four light seconds away, the targeting computer will always pull you out in time. You know, as long as you do it right and once you get the hang of it, every single time you're going to land on a space station anywhere, you're going to be able to do it faster. Once you are under 7.5k away, request docking as soon as you possibly can. You don't want to hang out or the space popos will start spawning. If you take too much time or decide to go out into the kitchen and make yourself a pizza, the space popos will scan you, and in order to counter that, all you have to do is hit a heat sink. Make sure you do it as fast as possible. You want your ship cold immediately. They can't scan through it when it's really cold. Now make sure you refuel and restock all of your heat sinks. Another handy bit of information, when you're actually getting here for the first time, likely your faction's probably going to suck quite a bit, so make sure that you take every single mission that gives reputation as much as you possibly can because in the very beginning reputation trumps how much money you're going to be making early on just focus on getting that rep up as quick as you possibly can because you will get far more missions that pay way way more money and that's what you want to go from no rep all the way to ally will take about an hour and a half of pounding out these missions back to back but it is well well worth it you're still going to be making money along the way so don't sweat it too much you can also stack up on quite a few engineering materials if you want to take those as well. Now if I wanted to, I could do another set of missions, but I'm going to go waste my time in the blue go over at Hesir's Reach. I will save you all the trouble of actually showing you that footage because I made way more money here. And by way more, I mean it's absolutely disgusting how much more money a python can make per hour as opposed to the beluga running passengers. So yeah, don't waste your time running passengers over at Hesir's Reach, there's way more popos for less money. I hope this video is helpful to your gameplay and if it was, please smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel for more future updates with Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Thank you very much to all my Patreons and YouTube channel supporters. Without you all, I wouldn't be able to do this. Thank you.